Hi there. Hey, hope you're having a great day. Here's a T5, a Taylor T5. My son Wes uh, bought it and he brought it to me and he said, boy, it sure has got high action. Do you think you could fix it and make it play better? So he's used to a low action, just as I am. And if you can see this, it's pretty damn high. So if you put your finger in the first fret, look at the difference. How are you supposed to play that? Now, if we take put our finger here and here, the first thing we're going to do is adjust the neck. Now, he probably wants a lighter gauge string. So, <clears throat> as I'm looking at this, one of the things we're going to have to do is adjust the neck. Then we're going to put on a different set of strings. And then we are going to look at the neck again. But um, before we do that, I think there's some shims under the, here, under that bridge. We're going to take out one, if not one, maybe two sh shims out of there. And what I'm afraid of is, look, at there's hardly any tolerance here between the string and the pickup. You can barely get this screwdriver through. So the, if I take out a shim here, this might be sitting on there. So we're going to have to lower that down. So the guitar has been sitting around a lot, looks like. It's, it's got a dirty fretboard. So, but we're going to work and try to get this thing to play good. I couldn't play this guitar. It, 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 it would be hard. It's, you know, it's okay, open chords. But to come up here, forget it. It's, this guitar should play like butter, baby. Not like it is. So let's first start with the um, truss rod. By the way, take a look at this nifty thing here. It's a sewing deal. I also have one of these. But it, it's magnetic. You know, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Put all your valuable screws in there so they don't go flying all over the place. Okay, so got the truss rod cover off. You know, logic would say, well, wait a minute. Don't adjust the neck till you change the strings. But I, I want to get the neck kind of straight so I can first deal with this bridge. Now, this particular truss rod nut is quarter, quarter inch. So we don't have the, we don't have the original wrench. So I'm just going to just a tiny bit. Let's check it now. Check our relief. Okay, I'm just going to do it just a tad more. Of course, we, you know, like I said, we don't have the wrench for this, and it's bizarre. Bob Taylor? Get, get the standard size for this. <coughs> Make your tailors with those. <coughs> okay, so now we have... That, that is like straight, you know? So there's no relief. But now, so I can see where the action is going to be. It's still as high. Look at that. See? That action should be like here. For me, anyways, and I'm sure for my son Wes too. The nut, if you look at the nut, that's a big gap for the nut. So we're going to have to work on the nut as well. I'm going to start pulling the strings off. Uh, so uh, it's got a fixed bridge, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the bridge off, hopefully. Or the saddle, I should say. This is called the saddle. Let's see what's under there. Ah, crap. No shims. Which means this is too fat. Which means now we got to go and file that down. Let's just double check, make sure there's not another. No. Nope. All right, so we're going to have to head on over and file that down a little bit. So 
What, how do we do that? Well, very carefully, I must add. What we're going to do is we're going to find out where that, we're going to make a mark on the bridge, on the saddle, where it's out there. So we can see that and we're going to shave off some st stuff here. It was mainly high on the, on this side. We're not going to shave this side. Don't mess with that. Just the underneath. Normally I might take this out to the garage and file this down with a sander, but I I, I want to be a, very careful with this just because I don't want to have to shim it. So look at what you do is just take your take a felt pen, mark it on here. So this way I can see if I've made any progress. So there it is, all black. I'm going to take it down to my file. I got my file right here. And I'm just going to go. And then I'm going to look at this and see, make sure it's done evenly. A little more. So, you know, we're taking off just a finite little bit. So we're going to do it again. So we can, we are getting a little, we're making a little progress. Remember how I said the base side was higher? Uh, so maybe we want to work on the base side a little better. So I'm going to mark this again. I've done this, I've done it about four, three, three or four times now. But this time when I go to sand it, with file it, I'm going to try to do it so I can leave some of the black there and take this off. So I'm going to kind of take it off at an angle with more pressure on the base side. So now notice, see, now there's black here, white over here. Now I'm going to put, put this back in. And the reason I drew that line is I wanted to see the line disappear. And as, as you can see, it did disappear a little bit. So we're a little bit lower than we were before, just with that file. I'm going to do it just a couple more times, and then I think we're good to go. Okay, so... I've got this in here. It Who knows if it might need a little more adjusting. Uh, we don't know until we get the strings back on it. But we do know that this pickup was going to be too tall because of how close it is. Now, I personally, this has the bass side closer than the treble side. To me, that doesn't make sense because a bass string is much bigger than a treble string. So if you want your guitar to be balanced, I would think you'd want the, the pickup to be closer to the treble side, not the bass side. So I'm going to switch this over. And this particular guitar uh, has got all these uh, screws, which I've already taken out some of them. Here's this cavity. Now I can lift this off. And there's, there's the mess inside. Now it looks to me like this is the adjustment. So this was the treble, or excuse me, this is the bass side. This is the treble. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a B by this. Right, and I'm gonna put a T by this. So I don't get confused because in my advanced years, I get confused easy. 
Let's see what happens when we adjust this. Treble side we want higher, so we're going to push it in. Base side we want lower. Let's see if we can pull it out a little. Hmm. Okay, so this is the base side, and the these screws are holding it in. And I think what I'm going to have to do, if you take a look there, it does have a little bit of a, you see how it goes up and down? Can you see that? Let me push it on the back, back side. See how it goes up and down there, see? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny little shim under there, I hope just to kind of balance it out a little better. We'll check it out. Of course, we should have done a, a, a test of the sound before, but experience tells me that's the way of the world. That's how it works. So what are we going to use? Here we go. Here is a, just a tiny little, tiny little shim there. That, it's not very big little plastic sh shim okay that's all we're gonna that's you know <clears throat> it's just a tiny adjustment but it might make a difference That one's in. Let's let me put, just get the screw started. Where's my Phillips? Okay. Let's do the next one. Okay, we're going to cinch this back down now. And it, we are going to see, I mean, I know it's going to make a difference. Whether it's enough to matter is a different story. Let's just take a quick look. Still looks like it's high to me, but... It's much better. Get a good look at this fretboard. I mean, it's dirty. It's uh, if you look at the frets, there is a little bit of a divot in in the B string, but looks like the guy never played too much above the fifth fret. Ain't no money past the fifth fret. So uh, anyway. What we're going to do is, I, I like to use this McGuire's. In the old days, we used to use um, a real fine steel wool, but it makes such a mess. Um, this McGuire's number two fine cut cleaner can get in there and clean all the junk out of there. Also use, this is kind of an abrasive little paper cloth. So... We're just, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this, put down a little bit of that, get that junk off of there. It'll shine up the frets too. McGuire's makes great stuff. You see the junk coming off? See that? I don't want to get it too wet. You don't want the wet, the uh, 
fretboard to swell. So you got me, well, I don't know about that. True or not, I don't know. But because we're going to put some linseed oil on it in a minute. But let's face it, it's a used guitar. You don't want somebody else's dirt out playing on all that dirt and junk. Yuck. You know, somebody picking his nose and then picking his guitar. And then you're going to play it? Yuck. You, you can tell I used to teach little kids. Okay, so we got the neck looking pretty good. I mean, it, I could scrub it a little more if I wanted to, but... Hell, this is just my son's guitar. Hey. <laughs> so, Lotus, the frets are shiny. Now we're going to add just a little bit of this stuff in seed oil. And it doesn't take much, okay, just a little bit. And it's just to get the neck to. Make sure it doesn't dry out. You do this uh, once, twice a year, you're, you're golden, okay? You don't have to do it all the time. Just kind of get it on there, wipe the excess off. Just let it sit. Now while it's sitting, if you take a look at this guitar, it's, it's, it's got this crud right here, this creepy crud. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with that. So uh, again, this <clears throat> fine cut um, Meguiar's wax or cleaner, whatever the heck it is, will probably cut through that. Oh yeah, that's sturdy. Try to go with the grain with this stuff. There's also a bunch of pick marks here. Sometimes it'll take that out if you rub hard enough and long enough. All right, you see the, the crud there? Remember, you know, a clean guitar is a happy guitar. I mean, what if you never took a shower or something? You'd be... You wouldn't be very happy, would you? Okay, let's wipe that off. It did take some of the pick marks out. Right here, I don't know if you, you can see what oh, I forgot to do over there. Let's do a little more now. Now this takes, you know, basically takes off a layer of varnish, if you'll if you will. And so you want to be a little careful. On the other hand, you want to do it. Okay, that's looking better. Use the other side of this. Let's do the whole thing. More dirt up here. Ah, yeah, that's a little too much junk. More dirt, dirt, dirt. Yikes. Whoops, I, I kind of went nuts there. Don't do that. Yikes. Extra shiny on that side there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that stuff uh, basically is, is pretty aggressive stuff. Now what we need to use is this stuff right here. And I think... Once again, you got to be careful with some of this stuff because it, it can, you know, it's automotive stuff. All right, but now you got to use this to on a new piece of thing. And we are, this stuff you can just kind of throw on there and spread it all around. You don't have to do a bunch of scrubbing and stuff. Oh, 
Good grief, what a mess. Wow. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't have had those martinis. So, it's a wax cleaner and it'll take the film off caused by the other stuff that we did. It's not so critical to go with the grain with this. Just kind of spread it all around, make it look even somewhat. And you don't even really have to let it dry too much. One minute and it's done deal. Let me show you. We're noticing a blemish here and I think it's the, the fella put his fingers here while he played. Try to keep the knobs intact. Yeah. You can still see smudge spots a little bit. It does it, look a lot better. It, 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 theoretically, it, it should be maybe buffed out if you really want it to be totally bitching. But let's do one more of this stuff just to be sure. Oh, jeez. Good God. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, hey, that's about as good as it's going to get for tonight anyways. I, we could take it down a little more in some spots, but I don't think it helps uh, too much because you know when you touch this stuff and sweat and you get the sweat and stuff, it it's hard to bring that back unless you have a buffing wheel. So let's just leave it at that. And uh, now I'm going to restring it, and then we'll see what what happens. Okay, we got the strings back on. Um, and um, it still isn't great. I mean, it's much, much better. You could actually kind of play it, you know. But uh, I like the action way low, right on the verge of, of buzzing. If you could, can you see the back, the little strings, the skinny strings, they're not so bad, but when you get down here, geez, Louise. So we're going to have to work on that bridge a little bit more. Now the next thing after we do that, the nut needs to be uh, adjusted as well. You notice this is quite a bit of distance here, right there. So we probably want it more like that and less like that. So we're going to have to adjust the nut. But for now, I think we made a marked improvement and that worked for the pickup height. And um, at least we got it cleaned up, and and so we're going to have to, you know, the radius on that bridge to me looks a little funny. You take a look, see what you think. Look, look down that bridge. You see how this side is way lower, and that is so much higher. It's like the it's not adhering to the radius of the. Uh, fretboard. So I think what we're going to have to do is starting right here, uh, 
is to kind of slope this end down a little bit more. It just isn't right. So we'll loosen the strings and pull it out and do it. And then we'll try, we'll put it in another video. The T5 Saga continues. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, adios. Hi, Rich here again. I just wanted to say thanks for checking out my videos. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and sign up for those notifications so you can see all the cool guitar videos we put out each week. If you want more lessons right now, I have hundreds of them at guitarcollegelibrary.com. Check out our low price monthly streaming memberships. And if you want to learn jazz, check out my course, Jazz Guitar Improv. I take beginner jazz players and get them playing awesome solos on the fly. You'll see the link for the JGI course in the description below. Hey, thanks again for watching my channel. We'll see you again real soon with a new video.